Okay, so I'm not like completely sober. <laughs> like, it's gonna be really loud. Oh no, no problem. I want to hear eyes, nose, and lips. Hi guys, it's June. Long time no see. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to our live event today. So today we're gonna be make, we're gonna be doing a cocktail making event uh, with some Korean traditional sur as well as some violin playing. And joining me here today with me is Lucas and Min. Hi, hi guys. My name is Lucas. Just in case you guys are not familiar with some of the Korean traditional sur, aka KTA alcohol. Um, I'm here to tell you about the stories behind it and some fine poly alcohols that you could actually get in the States. Basically, I'll be your alcohol guru for the day. All right, and this video is brought to you by AT Center. Uh, AT Center, uh, AT America is the U.S. Re regional headquarters of Korea Agro Fisheries and Food Trade Corporation in Republic of Korea and with branch offices in New York and L.A. And we're also going to be giving you some HMR products or just ready-to-eat foods uh, that are going to be a great pairing for the cocktails that we're going to be making with the Korean traditional suit. Right. So if I'm understanding correctly, basically they're pairing for all these, right? Yes, pretty okay. much. <laughs> yes, so we have all this nice free Korean alcohol with us and food for free. Sorry okay. to interrupt. Uh, actually, earlier I missed my intro. Oh, so oh, right. We missed we missed his intro. <laughs> <laughs> chance to introduce it, so, <laughs> so sorry. a special guest. Uh, today I'm going to make the cocktail for your traditional alcohol. And my best man, we'll see. I'll try to best make a cocktail for these two gentlemen. See Apparently, you. he's been bartender for many, many years in New Zealand, right? If I understand and correctly. And I got the lots of lots of award. Wow! Oh wow! Award. I didn't know that, but <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. We have an award-winning cocktail maker behind us, so hopefully these cocktails are going to be really good. So before we get started on making the actual cocktails and everything, I think Lucas has uh, wants to explain a little bit more about mm. Korean traditional food for you guys so you guys have a better understanding of what we're dealing with today. Before we get into drinking these products, let me just explain what sul is. So sul basically means alcohol in Korean, but if you just delve deeper into the meaning of sul, it stems from fermentation. Whichever alcohol, they come from fermentation. So wine, they are fermented product of grape, beer, they are fermented product of barley, things like that. And one major characteristic of fermentation is carbon dioxide. So if you actually witness an alcohol being fermenting, uh, fermented real time, you can see they are boiling. Not because it's hot, but because of carbon dioxide. Long time ago, Korean people thought there was fire in the water. Uh, if you know Korean, sul actually comes from the word su bul. Su means water and bul means fire. So it just basically means fire in the water. So that's the original meaning of su. There are about more than 2,000 different products being distributed in Korea. And today we're going to be focusing on Korean traditional alcohol, uh, 전통 su. And there are three different ways to become Korean traditional alcohol. Like all these we're talking about, they're Korean, Korean traditional alcohol. First one, is if you are recognized by the government as intangible cultural heritage, then you are one of those KTAs. Government recognizes that, oh, this one is very important culturally for our country. Then you just give out that license. The second way is uh, if you are called um, food grandmaster. I don't know, the name is very fancy, right? A uh, food grandmaster. Some like, something similar to the intangible cultural asset. Government recognizes certain people with great talent in making good quality alcohol recipes. You need to spend at least 20 years to get the license. You need to be brewing the same old alcohol for more than 20 years to even be 
just be eligible for the license. So it's, uh, those two are very hard to get a uh, KTA license. The third one is relati relatively easier and more abundant in Korea. If you live in Seoul, for example, and you, you utilize Seoul rice to make Korean traditional alcohol, like be it um, makgeolli or soju, whatever, then you are recognized as the contributor to the region who uses up a lot of crops. So in that way, government give you the license to become Korean traditional alcohol brewer. So those are the three ways to become KTA. There are many different types of alcohol um, sul in Korea. Around the world, the people's been making alcohol from the surplus of the crops that's been growing in that region. For example, barley was the abundant crop in Europe, so they utilized it to make uh, beer. They distilled beer to make whiskey. And in the state side, like um, North America or South America, there are a lot of corns, right? Mm -hmm. I believe there are like acres, like acres and acres of of corn farms in the state. So what do you make corn with? Bourbon whiskey, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So each region utilized a lot of like uh, crops in that region. For Asia and in particular Korea, what do you think we utilized? Rice. rice. Yes. Rice. So we fermented rice to make makgeolli and we filtered rice to make something called yakju and we distilled yakju to make soju and we all we also have fruit right so we have korean wines so we have these major four different types of korean sul all of them can be called sul in korea and today we'll be just introducing to you three hand-picked fine quality korean traditional alcohol that could be found in the states because the whole point is to promote awareness of Korean sul and it would be best if you could actually taste it for yourself, right? So uh, this is actually a lot of new things I've been, I'm have been i hearing today because I'm sure majority of you as well as me thought all Korean sul was like soju and like kasu or something like that. <laughs> but then, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I know of this one. I know the plum wine, but I didn't know mm. I didn't know there was such a vigorous process to becoming like an official Korean traditional sul. Right. And we have three here today, so excited to taste it. The first one is called Unbesul, and this is in a fine ceramic bottle, and this is 40% soju. 40% soju. Yeah, it's quite high. Like, what kind of alcohol do you drink? Uh, I usually drink soju. Mm. Mm. But like soju. those green bottle sojus, right? Yeah. So. Basically. Korea has like two different types of soju, which is green bottle soju, diluted soju with like diluted with water, and distilled soju. This one is distilled soju, so it's 40%. Diluted soju is about like 17%. Right, 16, 17-ish. So about three times stronger than what June's been trying so far. So let's see what he <laughs> reacts okay. like. Oh wow, oh, wow, wow. 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 This, this. <laughs> two shots of vodka. Okay, um <laughs> Um, oh wow, okay. I mean, for me, I'm used to drinking this like 40%, but it's quite strong, right? It's quite strong, but it's a lot smoother and a lot easier to drink than regular soju for some reason. I wouldn't know if, if um, I'm not told that this one is 40%. It's quite smooth and one major characteristic of this alcohol is that it's very floral mm -hmm. with the scent. When you drink it, what kind of scent um, could you imagine? Some mm -hmm. fruit? To be honest, it was like a very, it was like a very like, like it was just a very fragrant soju, mm -hmm. in my opinion, for me at least. And then it's like definitely went down a lot stronger than regular soju, but mm -hmm. but it was a lot smoother and it had like a certain aroma to it. I don't know exactly. What it was. Mm -hmm. So the name of this apple I said is Wun Pesu, right? Pe in Korean means pear. Oh. It directly translates to wild pear alcohol, but it doesn't have any pear inside. It's just, you know, sorghum, millet, and water, just distillation. But it's called wild pear alcohol because it smells like pear. Mm, right. So that's one like major characteristic of it. And this recipe, government thought it's very um, important. Mosquito. <laughs> yes. Very important to keep this recipe because it's very magical, right? How can you get this kind of pear scent when you only use certain crops? So they recognize this as national intangible cultural heritage. The first type of KTA that I talked about. And there are only three national intangible cultural heritage available in Korea. And this is one of the 
only three. So very rare and important. And one more fact about this alcohol is that it's originally from North Korea. Oh wow. Right. Okay. So whenever we have like South and North uh, conference, Inter-Korea conference, we have Mumbesur. North Korean people always look for this. Oh, can we have some Mumbesur in this conference next time? So something interesting about this alcohol. So next one, it's called Tamsol. Tamsol. Mm. And the point is in the second letter, Sol. You know, pine tree, right? Mm -hmm. Pine tree has pine cones. And I don't know if you've ever smelled pine tree or pine cone. They smell really nice. It's very woody. And I don't know if you know. Is it the, is it the same tree we use to make sumpan? Ah, yeah, yeah, same tree. The same but leaves, they right? use leaves. Yeah. But um, this one, it's cone. Oh, okay. Right. Pine cone. Not the cone itself, but then cone has a lot of like powders from it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they use that powder. It smells very foresty, if you know what I mean. And they use that powder to make this soju. It's also 40%. And one interesting fact is that they also put honey inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's gonna be Sweet. a little softer than the previous one. So let's give it a try. I didn't finish my moon best before. Will doesn't know what a pine cone is. Okay. Well, that's very unfortunate, Will. Okay, so we'll taste the second one. Amsol. Uh, one fun thing about Korean alcohol culture is that whenever one person is pouring alcohol for himself, it's polite for other person to be touching the other person's glass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should teach you guys about Korean sweet manners. <laughs> no, that's that's for another day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. How's the difference between the moonbeam? It's not floral. A uh, floral. It's spicy but sweet mm. at the same time. It kind of felt like whiskey going down mm. at first. At first, like the, the the initial scent and like how it like goes to your nose, the scent and everything. It kind of felt like whiskey. Interesting. And it's a great uh, cocktail ingredient because it's very spicy and it has very distinct scent. Mm -hmm. By the way, this one, it's the second type of Korean traditional alcohol that I talked about. So this one is a uh, food grandmaster product. Person living in uh, the city called Hamyang. She's been making this for many, many, many years. It's something very symbolic. Okay, I need to finish this before drinking the third one, right? Yes. Third one. Third one, last one. Mm. This one I'm familiar with. So this is relatively more popular in Korea as well. If you go to restaurants, you can also find this one. Um, this is called Seul Jungme, plum wine in Korea. I don't know if like this particular fruit Plum is familiar in the States. Do you, do you guys know plum? You guys know what a plum is, right? But like, it's like it's, it's not a very common fruit. It's a fruit, right? There are many, many different types of plums. They're like edible plums, but this particular plum, we don't usually just eat. We always make it into like alcohol or juice, something like that. I don't know if you can see inside. Yeah, inside, there are three plums inside. So I think it's gonna be different from the red plum that you're thinking about. It's actually green. It's a different type of plum. In Korea, whenever you have like stomachache, we always have this plum. Mm -hmm. mm. So let's give it a try. People are asking, can you eat the plum that's inside? I have never can tried, we? but you wanna give it a try? I think if we can get rid of this like white plastic, we, we can, I think. Isn't it like infused with alcohol? But we need to finish this bottle to Get this one, I think. Okay, let's just <laughs> we'll save that for next time. Done. Mm, this can one's you, my favorite. Can you tell if it's like alcohol? No, alcohol that's the thing. Favorite? That's the thing. <clears throat> the two distinct things from these two were that it tastes like alcohol, where like you have that like sensation of going down, burning your throat, kind of. It's, it's alcohol, but this one, it kind of just tastes like juice. I'm pretty sure if nobody tells you that this one is alcohol, I think you're just gonna be like drinking it like a juice and then you get doomed later. So this is a very dangerous, <laughs> right? dangerous one. How, how strong is this one? I think 6. 14%. Right. 14%. It's not low. 14%, more than twice double the alcohol person like proof of beer. I guess almost, almost like soju, but it doesn't taste like alcohol. Mm. What is your what is your favorite out of the three? My favorite. So I don't know if you know, but I'm selling these alcohol online in Korea. So I need to be politically right. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay. For now, if, if you're making something into a cocktail, 
I would prefer Damsol, but a straight shot, my personal opinion, uh, Mumbesul, I would um, try that way. I just I just like this one because it just doesn't taste like alcohol and it's sweet. I like I like sweet things, so I don't really like this. But I, this was actually surprisingly really smooth. So, floral soju. I don't like. If you're curious, I recommend you to give it a try. It's a very fun experience. What's what's your favorite? Oh. Thanks for asking. Because <laughs> actually, I thought you guys explain between explanation, I can make the cocktail. I can have a chance to make the cocktail. <laughs> but the best strict explanation was three bottles of alcohol. So finally, I can speak. Thanks for asking. Uh, my favorite is probably the same as Lucas. I'll choose alcohol for Umbesser. Yes. Uh, personally, I feel I taste like the flower taste at the end of the note. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good to drink by myself. Sometime. By yourself? By myself. You drink alone? Sometimes. Not sometimes. It's not really sad. It's not sad? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, finally, we get to try the Min's <gasps> award winning <gasps> cocktail. Right, award right. winning cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this cocktail uh, references by Korea Bartender Association. So, oh, wow. yes, but still, I can pretty good this is cocktail for you guys. Bartending, it's a whole new art. Yes, thank you. A lot you. of things to understand. learn. So, I'll use for the Moon Besser, and this cocktail name is Red Moon. So, you'll see later on why it's called Red Moon. Are we drinking the whole cocktail or just a sip? Any of you come from Mexico? When I went to Mexico, I enjoyed this very easy cocktail. You mix tequila with uh, grapefruit juice. It was amazing. Ta-da! It's called Red Moon. Red Moon. Yes. It looks pretty. Hello. This is Red Moon. And this color is a mixture of Moonbesur and... What's that red thing called again? Cream de Cream de Cassis. Cream de Cassis. Cream de Cassis. Cream de Cassis. Okay. I think so it's red made stuff. by Black Friend. Mm, black currant, mm, okay. Black friends. And lastly, grapefruit. So it's a grapefruit based cocktail. Again, a nice close up shot of the drink. So, cheers, we're gonna have a okay. tasting. Cheers. How it tastes like? Mm. Oh, that's good. This one's good. Wow. I had quite a bit of cocktails in my life, and this combination of grapefruit juice and this floral scent that Mumbesul has, they go really well. Yeah, the grapefruit and the, 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 the fragrance that he just mentioned. What I liked about this one, it gets a little bit more, like I guess, smoothed out, but the fragrance gets intensified with the grapefruit. It's really good. Wow, it's almost like pancake and maple syrup kind of combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so second cocktail I'll be used for the Donald which is made taste of like freshness to taste. Oh, by the way, this cocktail name is Breeze. Breeze? Breeze. 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 Uh, Have you guys heard of the mojito? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. This is type of Korean mojito. So, oh, yes. mojito Korean made of thumbs Korean style. Yeah, Korean style. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you guys know a fun fact? I came to Korea for two weeks. So I was only supposed to be here for two weeks, but then um, I packed enough clothes for two weeks. And I've been here for eight months. Senor so. Corona came. <laughs> yeah. Corona came yeah. and I wasn't able to go back. Now it's done. Wow. You guys missed the color actually. So oh. I put it on. It just turned blue. Trust me. Oh. So it will make more, it looks good and tastes better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Look at this color. It's so blue. Mm. Mm, okay, this one, this one's, this is my drink. <laughs> Can you smell the lint leaves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say it's amazing how distinctive I can hear this apple. Ah, uh, no. I can smell the apple mint scent. Mm, so good. It's like consuming this apple mint. It's like chewing. This is like. This is really pretty. Passion so, and. <laughs> like ocean and like sun. I don't know. So the first one was very fragrant. Mm. Has that like great flavor. And this, is, this one is just. This is really good. I like it, it's really good. And this was using which one? Tamsor. 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 Okay. The Food Grand Master product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're enjoying this cold breeze, you should enjoy this breeze. If you don't like this cold weather and you want to be a little bit warmed up, I think red would fit you better. Only just by the color. <laughs> okay. Last cocktail, right? So last cocktail is the easiest cocktail. 
So I'll just use for plum, plum wine and with ginger ale. When, when you guys went to the pub, have you guys heard something something dry? Something something in dry. Can you please whisk it in dry? Or yes, yes, I heard. And dry, are you, tiny water. Are you guys familiar? Are you guys familiar with that? When you ask for alcohol dry, maybe I'm not. Like yeah. Sixteen dry, whiskey dry. Uh, when you mention the dry word and end up the alcohol, they they commonly they mix with the ginger ale. I'll create this cocktail. Not actually create a cocktail. I just mix the cocktail with the plum wine with ginger ale. So this cocktail name is. Plum and dry. So it's really simple to make. I'm wondering, the plum wine, this thing itself, didn't taste like alcohol, but if you mix it with ginger ale, I wonder how it's gonna taste like. You can just like, <laughs> kind of prod people into drinking a lot of it and then get them drunk. Done. Cheers. I actually put in lots and lots of amount of alcohol. Oh, you did? Yes. Can you guys taste mm. the plum wine? Yeah, this is good. It tastes like apple juice. It's it yeah. like a little bit fizzy apple juice. Mm. I will never be able to tell if it's like alcoholic or not. So what is your favorite with uh, those three? If you guys have to choose one, only one cocktail, what I made. Red Moon. Red Moon. Oh. Because you love, you love, you like the movie three. Right, but also I I like the combination with uh, the balance. grapefruit juice and the floral scent that Ubezun has. How about you, Jin? So this last one, last one, just honestly to me, it tastes like a soda, like oh. a like a plum soda. It's mm. really good. It's really good. But then if I wanted to feel like I was drinking alcohol, I would prefer freeze. I personally like this flavor a lot. It's just very, I think, say shiwan, very cool, refreshing. Really refreshing. It's really like a breeze in your mouth. Actually, it's mm. a really good name for it. I just, I have a question. Yes. In the States, if a guy has a thing with a girl and the, if a girl has a thing with a guy, do you drink cocktails? Because like, these ones, they all taste like juice and it's very easy, smooth. Mm. So it doesn't feel like a lot of alcohol. It doesn't feel like you're getting drunk. Ah, uh, okay. But at the end of the day, you get drunk. And then the conversation is so much easier and then the thing that's between the guy and the girl is so much romantic and such a thing happened in the states as well they, they think it's a quiz oh. they, they think it's a quiz <laughs> it's not a quiz it's not a quiz we're just we're just we're just having a conversation but i think um is it a tactic to get the other person's yeah, but like I get, I guess like in America, like most of us like usually we drink like Long Island iced teas mm. or like what's that on the bitch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I should, I should have mentioned. Uh, no, no, it's cocktail, right? Yes, 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 yes. It's really yes, pretty yes. cocktail. I, yes, I love yes, it. Yes. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So grasshopper. Yeah, grasshopper, yes. grasshopper, grasshoppers. Yeah. Too. I like. I personally like gin and tonic, but um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I really like drink too much. Like drinking is like not like too much of a culture as much as it is in Korea, I think. In America, it's more like college parties, uh. clubs or bars and stuff like that. But people like beer. I don't I don't do too much drinking, and I I, I haven't done too much drinking in the states, so I'm not too sure. But if these drinks were available, to be honest, I prefer this. Like so, I might drink to go at a bar as a gin and tonic, but these obviously beat that right away because there's so much more depth. To the drink, in yeah. my opinion. But it sucks that you have to wait until twenty one to drink. True, true, true. true, true. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the most of the viewers with us today can't be drinking, so don't don't say as I do, don't do as I do. So don't don't be drinking. But if you want the bakalisa, okay. said, give it to your parents. Okay. So actually, so what we have here today, besides the alcohol that we mentioned, is the pairing that we have. So this is HMR or just ready to go food that we have. These items, so we have like, what is this? Sea munchies. So we have a bunch of snacks, little snacks that I think may be good pairings for these cocktails. So maybe you can also help us decide okay. what goes well with each thing. So let's try to introduce each one. This is sea munchies. This is I think seaweed. Seaweed nugget snack. And if you are hoping to become or stay young for the rest of your life, seaweed is your answer. Oh really? It's, oh really? Oh. It says it um, blocks like antioxidant process that's happening in your body, which means you're getting older. It blocks that process, so seaweed keeps you young. Wow, <laughs> I never knew that. Okay, that's that's 
And this is a, I think, traditional like rice crackers, mm. right? Korean. So recently there was a, a traditional um, holiday in Korea called Chuseok. And in those kind of like big national holiday, we eat this kind of snacks. Traditional snacks made of rice. These are really good. It's like really puffy, but it's kind of chewy at the same time. So the texture is really good, but this is a chew snack. What's that what? chew? Jujube. Jujube. So these are, I think, like dried jujube snacks. So cute. Like the word is so durable. Jujube, yeah. In <laughs> Korea, it's a chew. And then this is mushroom, but what? What's in the time? Oyster mushroom, mushroom chips? Okay, okay. Mushroom. yes. I personally don't know about this one, but um, mushroom chips, okay. Actually, that sounds pretty good. Okay, and then there's this one thing that I know I 100% I know all of you guys will like, which is kimchi salsa. I want to put that on taco. It's a kimchi salsa. So it's salsa made out of kimchi. There's no way this is not going to be good. But okay, so we're going to try to see what goes with what. I don't know which one will go with this. Maybe we should just try it out. Okay, I want to try jujube. So cute. Jujube. Okay. But do you want? is jujube something I'll, that... I'll try the mushroom. Like, I, actually mushroom? Want, I actually want to try the mushroom thing too. What's mushroom? Oyster mushroom. So we're going to try some oyster mushroom chips. Wow, actually, it actually looks like mushroom. I mean, I mean they, they dry mushroom, I guess. It's actually an oyster mushroom. They didn't do anything to the mushroom, but I think they just marinated. They just fried it. It's sitting, sitting on the top. Yeah, this looks like something you'd find at like a, a hot pot, shop shop place. We're eating healthy snacks. I don't know how a snack can get any healthier. Mm. Wait, this is actually kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> I like mushrooms. These are imported from Korea, so you can actually go to Asian marts, go to the like, go to Amazon to to buy these snacks. If you wanna show off to your friends that how healthy life you are living, <laughs> you can buy these snacks. It's very tasty too. Can I try them? Oh, of course. Mm. It's funny because this is the one that we thought would be like the weirdest one, but it's like the tastiest one. This jujube actually tastes like healthy taste. Like, is it, is it right? Is it right to say it's healthy? It tastes really healthy. We're supposed to be talking about the pairing between the snacks and the alcohol. We're just eating. But <laughs> we're just eating. Just to be honest, I'll just say eat it with whatever. Because mm. these snacks, they're just like crunchy and they're good by themselves. You want to get drunk, you want to have like a little conversation with your friend, just pick any drink and have this snacks to supplement that alcohol. It's gonna go well with any any of them. Yeah. But actually though, with the the mushroom chips, I personally think theoretically this goes well with the what was this one? Moonbezer? Moonbezer? Mm. Mostly because it has like a very flowery fragrance, right? Mm. And mushrooms are just obviously just from the na nature. So I think it actually goes quite well these two together. Because the other ones are very sweet and have like this like I guess like fruity flavor more so. Whereas this one has like a more like earthy kind of texture to it, not texture, flavor to it. So I think those two go well together, maybe. I just finished my roll so I can also drink. Oh really? Okay, yes. we're all drinking. So I'll, I'll try with the... Wow. What's this? Does it go well together? was right. <laughs> it goes crazy well. I'm a genius. We, we found the perfect pairing for room measure, which is... Wow, mm. mushroom chips. If you ever have like chance to come to Korea, perhaps after Corona, do visit this place. It's in the center of Gangnam, like center of Seoul. It's called the Seoul Gallery. You can just come and like listen to the um, English guided tour about Korean Seoul, as well as free drinks of five different alcohols per session. Oh yeah, that's right. I actually I actually came here yesterday to do like a like sound check or like just like a test for all the equipment and stuff. But there was people getting tours around. Oh, there's like we only talked about like three drinks here today, right? But there's obviously many more, right, right. that we can talk about. And they just get on a tour, and then here they come meet Min, who provides you with some free drinks, I believe. Right, free alcohol. Yes. Please visit the Soul Gallery and find me and Min. Then I'll guide you and give you a free tasting session. So some extra too if you get his name right. Oh yeah, yes. that's true. I promise. I promise. <laughs> if you mention my name, then I'll give you free more other alcohol. Next time you guys come to Korea, just be like, Hi Min. I saw you at Jun's live the other time. He's gonna be <laughs> oh, hello, hello. I'll, I'll give you first. I'll give you hug first. <laughs> right, but we need to introduce them two more snacks, by the way. Okay. The seaweed snack and sai gangjeong, the sweet rice puffs. So let's get on. Sea munchies. I told you, if you wanna stay young, get some seaweed. I'm not a doctor, by the way. And then the last is this one. Right, rice puffs. Rice puffs. Oh, as I mentioned, these are really good. They're very 
two suppression talks that are already available. I smell the ocean. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want to write the answer. Oh, so Ocean's in my nose right now. This is my favorite. I personally like this. These are rice crackers. Like I said, it's very... I'm gonna show you guys. So it's, it's crunchy, but it's kind of sticky on the inside. Oh. I can see that it's crunchy. <laughs> if I could pick one most traditional of Korea and most like authentic, I guess, I'd say it's this one, Rice Pop. It's actually made by one of the food grandmasters. I talked about the second type of KTA comes from the food grandmaster, right? The license is not only granted to the alcohol food grandmaster, also to different types of food, like kimchi or something like a snack like this one, rice puff. I think it's about time for us to wrap up here today. Uh, yeah, so honestly, I had a lot of fun, a lot more fun than I expected, actually. <laughs> I can see you from your face. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying this very much right now. But, um, <laughs> It was very fun because I was introduced to a lot of Korean alcohols that I didn't really know and being Korean, I guess not knowing these traditional alcohols, like it's kind of bad. I think I should know about it more and I'm glad that we were able to share this with you guys today and not just alcohol but also very fun, delicious cocktails. Award-winning. Award-winning cocktails. Award <laughs> award cocktail. yes. So we have award-winning cocktails here as well as some snacks. It was it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys learned a little bit and again I want to say thank you to Lucas for joining us today. Thank you Min for bartending. If you guys ever come visit Korea, make sure to come visit the Suru Gallery here in Gangnam. And today's video was again brought to you by AT Center. Korea nice. Food, uh, uh, Korea Agro, Agro Fisheries and Food Trade Corporation. Ooh. Yes. Yes, <laughs> and again, these out these uh, suits are available, I believe, on um, in Korean marts in the states, and these snacks are available on Amazon and Asian marts also in the states. Right. So, yeah. right. so quick recap: we have Munbae Sul, Dam Sul, and Seol Jung Mae, and we have these different snacks, rice puffs, and we forgot to eat this, but then Korean salsa and the seaweed, sea munchies, and oyster mushrooms and jujubes that could be found at Amazon and Asian marts around your neighbor. So if you're interested, please go look for it. Right. All right, thank you guys again so much. Um, I will be updating you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, say thank you, Lucas. Oh, they all, they all said thank you. They thank said you. thank you, Lucas. Thank, thank you, you, Min. Thank you. Thanks, Hasta dude. la vista. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank okay. you. Bye. Goodbye, have a good, great evening. Have a good night.